My ship was burning down the gravity well. Firehot atmosphere was screaming against the superheated hull. This planet wanted to claim us, and it already had us firmly in its grasp. The entry angle is suboptimal, announced an emotionless computer over the deafening roar. The ship was rumbling like a wounded animal. The AI was doing its best to keep us in one piece. I was being shaken around in my pilot seat like a rag doll. My hands were desperately clenched around the armrests. Structural integrity critical. I knew superhot atmosphere was licking against the inside of my ship. There were two giant holes made by enemy railguns. Punched through the whole width of the ship like it was made out of paper. One of them straight for the engine room. One of them had taken out the engines, right before a desperate FTO jump into the unknown. The rumbling got stronger. Angry beeping announced that nothing good was happening. Through the view screen, I could see green and blue shapes coming closer and closer. The rumbling became unbearable. I clenched my teeth. Then the ship was swatted by the fist of an angry giant. Without the safety harness of the seat, it would have been smashed like a fly against the windscreen. I was thrown back into the acceleration seat with even greater force. The computer was silent. The consoles were dead. I felt dizzy. My head was spinning. I tried to orient myself, figure out what was happening. But then the ship started spinning, faster and faster. The view screen became a blur of alternating green and blue. Green and blue. I was pressed into my seat with too many G-forces. My suit reacted instantly and compressed my legs, forcing blood back upwards to help my strained heart. Without thinking, I fell back into my training and began high gravity breathing. Push in air. Hold. Hold. Breathe out. Push in air against the pressure. Hold. Hold. Breathe out. Push. Then I fell unconscious. When I came to, I was hanging upside down, still strapped into the acceleration seat. Deafening noise and vibrations had been replaced by deafening silence. Instead of rapidly flashing lights, I was now surrounded by darkness. Fucking hell! I cursed. I squinted my eyes and tried to orient myself. What had been the front of the ship was now down. The ship must have been lying on its back and was tilted heavily towards its nose. If I had unstrapped myself, then I would have fallen towards the broken consoles and the view screen three meters below. I could not actually see the view screen as it was submerged in fire suppressant foam, a thick white liquid which had now poured at the new bottom of the room. I took a look around. The only light came from the luminescent light strips on the walls. The electronics were dead. I quickly checked myself for broken bones, but all I could find was a large number of bruises. My medical implants informed me of a mild concussion. My suit told me that the atmosphere in the bridge was breathable, but at an unusual composition and pressure. It was a bit thicker than usual, and there was less CO2. There must have been a leak. I kept my helmet on just in case. I raised my right arm above my head and grabbed the handle on the back of the seat. With my left hand, I unlocked the harness. For a breathless second, I swung out and my full weight was hanging on one arm. Then I slapped up my second hand upwards, next to the first. I flexed my stomach and swung up one leg. In one fluid motion, I heaved myself up onto the back of the acceleration seat. Lying there, I breathed heavily, and my head was hammering. At least it seemed like this planet did have a surface gravity similar to Earth. I looked up at my next goal. Three meters above me was the exit door of the bridge. It took me half an hour to get out of the bridge. I had to unscrew the floorboards and climb up onto the cables and carbon compound skeleton underneath. The bulkhead door was locked, but not sealed from any pressure differential, so I could just use the lever on the wall next to it to pop it open, which was easier said than done, given that the lever was now on the ceiling. When I stuck my head through the half-open door, I was greeted by a view that was both terrible and amazing. There should have been the crew quarter right behind the bridge, but only half of it was still there. A few metres above me hung a bright blue sky of a foreign world. The next bulkhead was completely gone, the walls before it were shredded apart like an exploded coke can, exposing their guts underneath. Two thirds of the ships were missing. Cargo bay, engine room, fusion generator, jump core and engines. All gone. I heaved myself up for the half open door, sat down right next to it and just sat there for a while. Too stunned to move on. At least the air is breathable, I thought. My suit did not complain. I unsealed my helmet and placed it next to me on the ground. Warm sunlight touched my face and a pleasant breeze ran through my short brown hair. Maybe this plant isn't so bad, I thought. I decided to bite the bullet and took a deep breath. The air smelled like fried electronics and ozone, but it was fine otherwise. Slowly I peeled myself out of the rest of the hard shell flight suit 
and just kept on the soft black undergarment. I closed my eyes for a moment and pinched my cheek. Move your ass, Sam, I thought. I pushed myself up and began hunting for supplies. Emergency rations and water were quickly located since they were so close to the bridge. Also an emergency stun gun and some boarding grenades from the weapons locker joined my little collection. I also found a self-sharpening ceramic knife. I improvised a backpack out of a laundry bag and some cargo straps. But I had to climb around quite a bit in order to find my handhold computer. It had been flung around and lodged between two cupboards. I fished for it and pulled it out with just two fingers. I attached a small flat black box to the suit velcro on my left upper arm and a small green LED began to blink hectically when I held down the power button. A little vibration signalled a successful pairing. Welcome, Sam, said a chipper AI voice in my ear implant. There appears to have been an accident. Oh, you don't say, I answered, and for the first time I relaxed and laughed. The AI on my computer was a bit stupid compared to the ship's own AI. Do you wish me to pair with the remnants of the ship to run a diagnostic? Please confirm. Yes, I said. It only took half a second. All systems are offline. I can restore power in the two remaining compartments for 6 minutes and 44 seconds using the emergency backup batches of the defunct life support systems. Do you wish me to proceed? I only turn it on long enough to recover the black box data and to perform a scan of the surroundings. Priority, hospitality for human life. After we see if you can locate the rest of the ship, then turn the power back off. Understood. There was a low hum. The lights on the walls flickered back into life. The door to the bridge opened completely. Here and there flew some sparks in the ruptured walls, but the offending circuits were quickly disabled by the AI. After a minute, the power was turned back off and the hum disappeared. The AI happily chirped his report into my ear. Tasks complete. Black Boss data has been recovered. The main sensor banks are damaged beyond repair, but I managed to get some readings from the interior sensors. The ship AI has also recorded some scans during the descent. And the rest of the ship? You are not going to like this, Captain. I am afraid the other fragments have been spread over the side of a mountaintop. The nearest fragment of note is located in 25 kilometers distance on difficult terrain. Oh, great. Anything still in one piece? Unlikely. Well, even better. Not even the emergency beacon? Confirmed destroyed. I laughed. And what are the bad news? You might want to climb up and see for yourself, Captain. Wait, those weren't the bad news, I thought. I collected my stuff and began climbing up the wreckage of my ship. I heaved myself up on the lone support beam, close to the edge. When I peeked over the edge of the wreckage, I saw water. The nose of my ship was stuck in the middle of a lake, like a broken eggshell sitting in a puddle. The nose had dug deep into the lake bottom. The water directly around the wreckage was steaming, probably from the heat of the hull, which had just gone through a rather unfriendly FTO jump, followed by a hell ride for the atmosphere. I was careful not to touch any part of the outer hull. I could feel the heat from a distance. But what was even more concerning were the creatures. Eyeless, white monstrosities, like snakes or eels of enormous size, with round mouths and countless rows of teeth. Their bodies were as thick as a tree trunk, and they were each several metres long. They were splashing around in the water around the wreck, attracted by the foreign object and only repulsed by the heat of the hull. As I peeked over the edge, one of the monsters shot up in the water below. It aimed at me. For an instant, I looked straight into its horrible mouth full of glass-like teeth. I came to my senses and pulled myself back over the edge as fast as I could. I heard an impact, a sizzling sound and some screeches of pain, where it impacted on the hull, not far below where I had been standing. My heart was beating like crazy. I quickly looked over the edge again. The monster had catapulted itself up three meters high, and its body had not even fully left the water. Now it fell back into the lake. The skin close to its mouth was seared black by the heat. A smell of burned rubber reached my nose. I kept myself from retching. I looked at the stun gun on my belt and felt ridiculous. The small gun would not even put a dent in one of these things before it ran out of power. And once the hull cooled down, I would be in serious trouble. Any ideas? I asked the computer on my arm. Captain, they are all around you in the water. They are surrounding the ship. Should we try to shock them with electricity? I looked at the white squirming masses below with disgust and rubbed my legs. There is not enough juice left in this wreck to even run the scanners for longer than a second. And this lake is way too big. There is no chance in hell that we can even stun these things. No, we have to resort to more primitive methods. Do you have an idea, Captain? There is a fishing method. It is as simple as it is destructive. It is outlawed in all of Terran space, but my uncle is from a small village in the Philippines. And during the great famines of the 21st century, nature preservation became less important than survival. 
He showed this to me when I was 12. I pulled out the grenades. But Captain, those have pretty low yield and no shrapnel. They are designed to blow pressurized environments or stun invaders during hostile boarding. Watch me. I carefully armed them and threw them overboard. One for each cardinal direction. Four times we could hear a boom, followed by a splash. The wreckage shook with each explosion. Water splashed high. I almost fell off my spot atop the wreckage. One of the walls started cracking and water started flushing into the interior. An underwater shockwave is more destructive than you might think. It ruptures the swim bladders of all nearby fish, and unless their bodies are completely wrecked, they will drift to the surface where they can be picked up by a lazy fisherman. I took a cautious look over the edge of the hull. As I had hoped, there drifted several dozen white serpent monsters on the surface of the water, dead or dying, even more than I had suspected. A few must have been hidden below the surface. I took the computer off my arm and put it into the backpack. Then I strapped it to my back. Finally, I pulled the knife from my scabbard and placed it between my teeth. Here goes nothing, I said between clenched teeth. I took one last look at the wreckage of my ship while it was slowly filling with water. Then I took a running start and jumped straight into the lake. <laughs>